Network programming is a discipline where Rust is a great choice of language. Programs that interact with the network need to be fast and reliable, have low memory and CPU usage, and make fearless use of concurrency. All of these are things that Rust is great at. In this series, we're going to build RCAT, a Netcat clone written from scratch in Rust. If you've never come across Netcat, it's a program used for interacting with the network from the command line. Let's take a look at how it works before we dive into some coding. So I've got started here by setting up a Docker container, which has been called Suspicious Bratane. There are instructions for doing this in the repository, which I'll link in the description. So you can try this out for yourself if you want. But while this is running, I can create a shell into my container. And we can see that we're running inside a Linux container that has my project mounted into it. Now we can try out netcat in this Linux environment. So we'll do netcat. We'll give it the L command to listen. And we'll tell it what port to listen on, which will be 2323. That's up and running. Now if we switch over to another shell, and we'll just take this command with us, we can run exec into that shell again. So we've got a second shell inside the same container. And we'll run netcat, but this time we'll do localhost 2323. And that will connect to our server. We won't see anything here yet, but if I start typing, And each time I hit new line, we should see data being sent through to here. So we have a server listening in one shell and a client connecting in the other. And this is what we're going to focus on building initially is just two apps that can talk to each other over TCP. So let's see how that will work. There's a small command line portion of this app in main, which we're not going to look at today because it's just a skeleton. It's going to get replaced. So we'll see how to use it in a second, but we're not going to worry about looking at it today. So for now, let's figure out how to implement the connect file. There is a run function here, which is going to be the TCP client for our application. So the first thing we need is an address to connect to. So we'll build the address from the host and port. So we'll use a format macro with a placeholder, colon placeholder, to combine the host with the port. And then we'll use TCP stream, which is part of the standard networking library for Rust. TCP stream connect to address. And then that will return us a result. Let's have a look at what that's going to be. So it's a result of TCP stream. And there'll be an error type associated with that result. We don't really care at the moment what the error is. So let's just give back something in a string, which is what this function expects to be returned is a result with a string error message. Create a lambda that doesn't look at its parent error and format a message saying failed to connect to and then we'll substitute in the address and we'll use the question mark syntax to bubble this error up from this function if something goes wrong. So now our client is just a TCP stream. So we can do client dot write and we'll give it something to send which can just be something like hello tcp and that will need to be bytes to be sent and it's also complaining that our client needs to be borrowed mutably to be written to so we'll make our client variable mutable and then again we want to handle the error if anything goes wrong here so we'll map the error to a string We'll ignore the input, so we're not going to care about the error that really happened. And we'll just send back a message saying, fail to send, if anything goes wrong. And again, question mark syntax to bubble that error up. So let's build this and see how it works. Let's build the whole project with cargo build. And straight away we find out we've done something wrong. So our address variable that we've built has been moved because strings don't get copied by default in Rust. So when we pass the address to the TCP connect, that was moved out of that variable. We don't own it anymore. And then we've tried to read the value of it when we format out, format out our error message. So let's quickly jump back to the code and fix that. So to fix this, we don't want to move our address out of this variable here. So what we're going to do instead 
is call as str on that, which will create a string reference instead of actually moving the value out. So that should work. Let's jump back and try and build it. So we'll run cargo build. And this time we expect our binary to be built. There we go. So let's check that that runs. So we'll find it in target, not on Linux. We want to do target like that, debug, and it should be just called rcat under there. There we go. So we've had our usage printed out. Let's set up a netcat server and try and connect to it with our new connect command. So netcat listen on port 2323 and then we'll run rcat connect to localhost on port 2323 it says it did it and we see our message hello tcp printed out so that's working it doesn't work quite like netcat does yet we can't type into it from our terminal we're just sending some fixed text, but that's a good start. Next time we'll look at the server side of this and then we'll start building out how it'll connect to the terminal and we can interact with it properly.